Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. We have you know, heard many, many times the story of the resurrection. Roman guards at the tomb had 16 guards. Now we know the Roman army documented their stuff. Documented it well. So let's, uh, we know this, the, the biblical side of the story, you know. They placed them in a tomb, goes to Amarthea, had Pilate given the body, they carried it to the tomb, Mary and the other women followed. Came back, you know, while you're sick, living among the dead, all that. Jesus resurrected, Area 51, tomb of Jesus Christ. All right. We've heard that. Now, let's, let's, let's hear a Roman perspective. Now, this ain't in the Bible, but I will darn near guarantee it's truthful as it's going to get. It has been recorded that you kept good company with the traitor Claudius. Others have chosen to remain silent to a desperate penalty. You, on the other hand, have the glorious opportunity to serve Rome and not betray yourself. You were friends with Claudius. Yes. To the best of your knowledge, please describe in detail the events surrounding your friend Claudius's death. Marcus. Marcus. You mock Caesar for the sake of a lunatic beggar. How dare you belittle he who clothes you and, and feeds you? Eat this, Rome! You go! I don't know any of these Jews' names. They're my worst enemies. He knows none of them. None of these Jews' names. But all he knows is they his worst enemy. That's what they thought of each other. Five years in the academy and I'm assigned guard duty at a tomb. Tell me again exactly why was this man executed? You wear yourself down with trivial information. It's not our place to ask questions. You saw what I saw? Yeah. And you weren't bothered? The only thing that will bother me is if we aren't compensated for two nights of extra duty. I've never seen such passion. I mean, to see one of your own people die was almost like a celebration. People don't seem to take too well to false messiahs. I'll never understand why Jerusalem doesn't simply find solace in the strength of Caesar. And who's to say Caesar won't suffer the same fate? Rome will far outlast the superstitions of the Jews. Or at least as long as that coin lasts in your purse. Do you betray Caesar? I only acknowledge that he'll someday be forgotten. Sure. And Rome will burn.
compensated for extra work. Loving that coin. Superstition. One day to submit to Caesar. Romans. Despised Jews. Didn't believe in Lord Jesus Christ. Didn't believe in God. They worship what? Molech. All them Roman gods and all that other mess. Roman gods. Rome. They documented this stuff. This man was arguing over money. Putting down God. Flipping that coin. Worshipping that coin. all he could talk about. I began to suspect he had a darker side. Did you suspect illness? Mental? Please, continue. Do you see what I see? Like there's a Pharisee standing there at a military tribunal. A Pharisee. That's a Jew man. What's he doing at a Roman soldier's trial? Oh, this ain't biblical. I guarantee it's true. Cool. I wish I could sympathize with you, but this whole mess bought me another day off. What do you mean? Exactly what I said. We arrived at the tomb and they dismissed us. They? You know, uh, the captain, a couple of guys from your unit. Chief priest, some other religious men. Chief priest? Come to think of it, it was rather interesting to see them fraternizing with Roman soldiers in broad daylight. Really interesting to see Paris chief priest and some other religious men fraternizing with Roman soldiers in broad daylight. Roman soldiers knew it was crazy. Romans could not stand Jews. What Pharisee had ties to Rome and was able to pull stuff out. But you, you were out cold. Or so they say. What do you mean, or so they say? It's not your fault. Why would it be my fault? What is it? I believe you. But the prisoner has escaped. Escaped? That's ridiculous. He'd been dead for almost three days. Right. The story is that some chief priests bribed the soldiers to say that some followers stole the body. While we were on duty. Well, they said you were asleep. No, we weren't. I wasn't. That's a lie. What guard would admit to being asleep? It's punishable by death. I know. I know. A rumor. A rumor that could get me killed. So you're going to tell me? A Roman guard admitted to being asleep on duty. Any, any military, U.S. veterans. What well, if you go back and tell your sergeant, your captain, "Hey, sir, uh, sir, I fell asleep, and the shit hit the fan. Now there's a lot of trouble. What's going to happen to you? I fell asleep, man. I fell asleep. Sorry." Hope it ain't too much trouble that got started, but I know it hit the fan.
I don't understand. Why would he chase a Jewish child? He recognized him. And do the Roman guard make it a habit of recognizing Jewish children? We are hardly referencing the entire Roman guard, sir. We are speaking of a lone, deranged man. My mistake. You're rambling, Marcus. At what point did you begin to doubt his allegiance to Rome? I'm getting there. We'll get there quickly. What precisely drew him to the child? I don't have that information. I need that information. Well, then I suppose you'll have to ask Claudius. Yes, I bet that's accurate. I bet it's as accurate as it can be. Throughout time. Don't elaborate. Why? Can't you obey orders just yes and no? I'm not taking a bribe, and I'm not saying I was asleep. Some say he was the awaited messiah. And that's the kind of thing you're not going to say in there. I can tell anything but the truth. Spoken like a true Roman. Do you want to die? Become a hero? I want the truth. We fight for the same things, young Claudius. Gentlemen. Justice. Safety. The protection of our people. You, of course, politically, we spiritually. But you Romans do not have an understanding of my people. We are attempting to spare you much grief in regards to the implications of perpetuating this unlikely tale of a little man's claim to resurrection. But we find this difficult while you refuse to close your mouth. All of Roman rule is threatened by one little How man. How difficult is it, Claudius, to remain silent? The sect could cause many problems in Jerusalem, which would spread throughout the country, jeopardizing Roman rule. So it's a political decision? He was brought to fair trial, sentenced by Pontius Pilate. I know that. I was there. I want to know more than what I saw. I want to know what happened. Of course you do. And so do we. All we're asking is that you keep this incident to yourself until we've had time to observe the sect. Now that the followers have stolen the body, attempting some kind of validity to their messiah, we fear matters could escalate. The truth, soldier, is that you're the only one in the entire Golgotha detail who hasn't admitted you were asleep. No one believes your clever story of an earthquake. I saw what I saw. I challenge anyone who says otherwise. Pharisee is worried about himself. A Pharisee is telling him to keep quiet about some little old man's story about resurrection. Pharisees didn't believe in him. Pharisee is at a Roman tribunal with a Roman officer and a Roman soldier telling the Roman soldier to keep his mouth shut. What Pharisee would be able to do to get something done like that? What were your thoughts concerning this mistreatment of poor Claudius? At the time, I was unaware of his previous mental condition. Mental condition? in Rome, the very reason he was transferred. How did you come about that knowledge? You know full well, sir. It came from you. Oh, yes. So a Pharisee is passing along information. How did the Pharisee get this information? Only way a Pharisee can get this information if he has ties to Rome. See that man writing? It's documented. Court reporters. A Pharisee giving out information on Roman soldiers. I bet it's as accurate as your idol. I bet it's as accurate as your idol. Not as accurate as the red letters in the first four books and the last book. The memory does get cloudy. 
when one hasn't slept. A mental condition is quite a secret for a friend. To keep it hidden from those who fight at your side would almost seem dishonest. How did that make you feel? How did that make me feel? A Pharisee saw come to check out his handiwork. He likes to call it dissension. He likes to spy. He likes to cause strife and contention amongst the brethren. And you didn't see him again until he came back to the garrison. This is what I've already told you. Then where did he go following the sparring incident? We were hardly friends any longer, sir. I made no record of his whereabouts. Perhaps we haven't made ourselves plain. Claudius's location in those few hours is the primary interest of this discussion. And perhaps I haven't made myself plain. I can't help you. Continue then, from the garrison. Admiring your handiwork. What are you doing here? It seems our man Claudius, an escalating headache for my people, I assure you, was seen with the eleven themselves. I thought there were twelve. Eleven. What do you expect me to do? I apologize. I was expecting you to do your job and control your men. If they become a threat to the city, shall I go above your head? You've crushed that man's spirit already. Need you ruin his life as well? It seems as if your priorities are leaning toward the better of the one rather than the better of the whole. That can't be right. I'll send my men to follow him. As you wish, Captain. Better of the one than better of the whole. That can't be right. Where were we heard that for? Oh, go read the book of John. Caiaphas prophesied how Jesus would die in front of all the other Pharisees. Sacrifice one for the better of the whole. So the Pharisee had just threatened a Roman captain. Threatened a Roman captain, Roman officer. That he's going to get in trouble if he don't listen to that Pharisee at G-Man. Only a Roman citizen government elite could get away with that. I bet it's as accurate as your item, except for the red letters in the first four books and the last book. I hope you find what you're looking for. Don't hope. Pray. So I told him if he didn't report to his superiors within the next hour, I would be forced to see that justice was served in regard to his blatant defiance. Then why didn't you? There was no need. As you said, you sent your spies yourself. What occurred in the disciples' quarters? That is where the mystery will remain, sir. No one has ever seen him again. He simply disappeared. Like a dead body. <sighs> you
You wouldn't have any reason to be dishonest with us, would you, Marcus? I don't see how it would serve my country or myself. Isn't that what is most important? So you have heard nothing, seen nothing, and been given no information regarding what happened behind that closed door? Nothing at all, sir. I swear it by Caesar. So the Pharisee is what he knew everything. The Pharisee knew what he was doing. None sent spies to watch the Roman soldiers. Spying on a Roman soldier, and the Romans knew about it. The Roman officer, Roman captain, knew it. A Jew man, a Pharisee, was spying on a Roman soldier, keeping tabs on him. There's only one Pharisee I know of that can control the Roman government. You are free to go. It is quite accurate, you know. What is that, soldier? How difficult the sun can be when you've sat in darkness alone. That will be all. One more thing. Oh? What is it? What story will be given in regard to Claudius' whereabouts? We don't believe that's any of your concern. I may be asked, and as a friend, I should be one to know. Suffice it to say that another Roman citizen ended his life, falling prey to the enticements of the enemy. Dying like a good soldier. The best. Then that is what I will say. Unless, of course, you have something to add. No, sir. Not to the best of my knowledge. Vatican has all the records. We know the Vatican hides many things. No. The Vatican knows. Roman soldiers were disciplined. Very, very disciplined. Alright. Let's close that one. Called them two centurions. Make ready 200 soldiers to go to Caesarea. Who did this? The chief captain, the young man, 
that young man depart who oh, 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 oh be doggone saw called a centurion unto him have him tell the captain what to do saw was ordering the roman military around in scripture in scripture folks saw ordering Roman army, centurion, telling captains what to do. And the money they spent, the resources, Paul ordered up, and the captain gave in to Saul of Tarsus. Pharisee Saul made sure Saul was safe. Commanded them. It was commanded the soldiers to take Saul. Make sure he's safe. Make sure Saul is safe. Roman military taking care of a Jew man. Paul and civil obedience in Romans. In scripture. Submit to your civil authority. Submit to Rome. Submit to the authority. Oh, yeah. See, deer is when he said, hey, I'm Roman. Then he started ordering the Roman. He was in Acts. Saul orders the Roman government around. Oh, 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 oh. Let's see what they say. Uh, study relations with civil authorities. Oh, yeah. Yeah. See, we find, I already know what to talk about. First Peter, which I don't believe Peter wrote that, be subject to every human institution. No. No, no, no. We are not subject to no one but the Lord. That's what Saul taught. Saul, Romans 13, 1, let every person be subject to the governing authorities. Scripture shows Saul of Tarsus as an antichrist. Born about in Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel. Talk about Ezekiel. Warned by Jesus Christ, the gospel, and rebuked in Revelation. Scripture. View from a Roman, a Roman perspective. I suggest y'all read the Bible, the first four books in the New Testament and the last one. James, John, Peter, and Jude. The rest of the books? No. Oh, he wants to throw them out. Well, Saul says y'all throw the Old Testament out. Y'all throw the entire Old Testament out. And the first four books that Jesus was speaking. And you twist Rome, uh, Revelation like a pretzel. Might want to follow the shepherd. Because you can't get in no other way. The shepherd said, come in another way. You're a thief and you're a liar. View from a Roman's perspective. God bless.